does it have to remain taboo to talk about money? I think not. Hey there, welcome back to my channel. As I've spoken about the headwinds facing the modern woman's retirement, I often use a word muscle memory when it comes to learning investment strategy, portfolio decisions, et cetera, et cetera. And the fact is that women just often don't have the same muscle memory as men when it comes to talking about money. So on this video today, I'm going to be talking about three ways that you can start developing muscle memory with investment decisions. But before we get into that, don't forget to subscribe to this channel for a regular Pleasant Financial Conversation. And for you ladies, hop on over to my online community, Pleasant Financial Conversations, where we talk about all things money and you're able to ask any question that you have. So before we get into this video, I just want to say, sometimes when people hear me say women lack muscle memory with investment decisions, that I'm actually saying women are bad with money and that is pretty far from the truth. Hello. Women are cash flow queens. Inflow, outflow, she's got it handled. That is the wheelhouse that a woman brings to the table for money decisions. When I say women are lacking muscle memory, it's really about the investment talk. So it's talking about the stock market, investment vehicles, like why you title one account one way versus another way. And the reason is that women just don't talk about this in our regular circles. I always make the joke that men are sitting around at the golf course drinking beer with their buddies talking about investments. It's true. And women are at the coffee circle and talking about relationships. And what if after this video, you take this information that I give and bring one of these conversations back to that circle and have a really good financial conversation with your friends that helps each of you grow, each of you become more stable. That's a dream of mine. So here are three different easy topics that you can bring to the table. The first topic that you can bring to the table is talking about the 401k. Here's some tips. Don't talk about balances. Don't talk about amount of money going into it every year from you or your employer. Talk instead in percentages, because if we talk about percentages, then you're, you're getting out of the income conversation, how much money someone has. When you're talking about the 401k, here are some questions that you can ask about. How was it that you came to your allocation strategy? So how is it that you developed exactly where you were going to invest? And not just the answer of person recommended X and I said, okay actually breaking it down and talking about the investment structure. Also with that, you can just ask how you decided what percentage of your income to put towards retirement. Maybe it's because there's a certain match coming from the employer or a profit share, or maybe it's just that you wanted to reach a certain target. These are conversations that are helpful to have. The second topic that you could bring up with friends is talking about, if it applies, how you are paying for kids college. So there are so many different ways that you can approach this financially. You can cash flow it. So money coming in, money going out every month, you can pay for your kid's college. That might not work for everybody. So in the meantime, there's planning strategies like using 529s, education savings accounts, UTMA. What I love about this, especially for a mom to talk about her child and tie that back into investing, it's like all of the goodness that a woman brings to the table with investing, blending the relationships in with the investing piece and good money decisions. The third topic that you could bring up is when you have one of your friends that is caregiving for a parent. And oftentimes when someone has to step in as a caregiver, not only are there health concerns, but there's financial concerns and they're exposed to both and see how they interact with each other. So deciding where to pull money from to pay for the expenses, when to bring in assisted living or some sort of outside care into the home or when to send the parent to assisted living. Those are all decisions that come down to a financial component and it's not their own situation. So they're able to be a little bit more open. Like this is, this was the decision-making process that me and my siblings went through to, in order to figure out what to do for mom and dad to make sure that they're in the best hands, have the best care. Also with this, I think it's, it is fair and interesting to understand when someone steps into the caregiving role for a parent, what it is that they're giving up personally. So understanding the reduced hours that they have to take at work or the pay cut that they have to take at work, even if you don't know the dollar amount, but you know that my, my salary was reduced by 20% because I'm not there one day a week to help my parent do X, Y, or Z. When you can take a step back and see the financial impact on a life situation as it impacts, in that case, two families and their finances, 
um, it helps you see what's happening with money and connect it back to the decision making behind it and why you might do one thing versus another or why something was done, but maybe a different choice could have been better, etc. Will you take me up on this challenge? Take one of these three topics back to your friend group and just try it out. You can even tell them, I'm trying something new because I heard that women don't talk about investments as much and I think it would be good for us. Maybe we'll fumble through it a little bit. Maybe we'll feel a little uncomfortable at first, but the more women step to the table, to the coffee table and have these conversations, the more stable we are in later in life. And so if you become the leader of your friend group, bringing this conversation to the table, you are not only impacting the goodness of your own life, but also the stability of everyone in that circle around you, which you care about so much. And when you do, please jump to my online community, Pleasant Financial Conversations, and let me know how it went. And for you ladies who are stepping towards retirement and trying to make those decisions, incremental retirement decisions like social security or pension, or how to withdraw from your portfolio, or really how to invest your portfolio, that's the conversation I love, and I would enjoy an initial conversation with you. If you go to my website, www.pleasantwealth.com to request a meeting, we can get a time where we talk about what's going on with you, the plans that you have ahead, and how my services might match up with what you need. I'll look forward to that conversation. And until next time, friends, you take care.